Targon too, known as Alkali Flats to the locals. It certainly is flat, the warlord agreed. High levels of alkali and rare earth metals, the intelligence officer continued. High enough that the oceans are completely toxic to all but a few extremophile microbe species. The soil is equally toxic and the lack of vegetation allows enough dust to enter the atmosphere to render that toxic as well. Since surviving there requires air and water filtration equivalent to recycling in a closed system, is listed as uninhabitable, despite having an oxygen partial pressure in the optimal range and enough of a magnetic field to deflect the worst of the solar storms. So why bother with it? The warlord asked. Because it has unusually high concentrations of the elements needed for the countergrav systems, and because the lack of a pressure differential significantly simplifies the engineering requirements for a closed habitat. That combination is enough to make working there slightly more efficient than asteroid mining. Long term, it could add up to enough to finance a 5% fleet expansion. But the humans got there first. The humans got there first, the intelligence officer confirmed. How do they keep doing that? The warlord demanded. Psychological factors, the intelligence officer said. Although they are uh, predominantly a social species, they are variable enough in temperament to always throw out a few individuals who find the company of their fellow humans grating. Finding even sparsely settled planets too crowded, these isolates form the outer fringes of the human diaspora. But where they go, more humans inevitably follow. Fortune seekers, those fleeing from scandal, and those who have nearly as little tolerance of crowds but still require regular interaction with their own kind. The intelligence officer took a breath and continued. Every human who settles in a given place makes it that much more attractive to those who prefer a slightly higher population density, and less tolerable for the isolates, causing the cycle to constantly repeat. The only reason humans aren't running the entire supercluster is at its even odds whether any given human or group of humans will get along better with their own species or a different one, leading to higher assimilation rates. Hmm, I've heard stories about what it's like fighting humans, the warlord said. What makes you think we can take this planet? The toxicity of the planet means they can only grow food crops in closed environments, the intelligence officer said. That may allow for self-sufficiency, but only for a fixed population size, and it leaves no margin for emergencies. The population is above the threshold where they could plausibly have stopped out enough emergency supplies to see everyone through a prolonged siege. So we interdict all shipping and just wait for them to die off? The warlord asked. Or wait until they get angsty and then offer them generous terms for a transfer of sovereignty. May not even need to evict anyone. Miners tend not to much care who they're selling to as long as they don't get cheated. And humans assimilate readily. As long as you leave them room to grow. Play this right and we may end up with some humans of our own. Useful they are, if irritating. Hmm. The warlord considered the suggestion. It's not like blockading a system with this little traffic would cost us anything. The fleet would just be sitting around somewhere else otherwise. 30 years later. The warlord is older but still healthy. The intelligence officer retired and has been replaced by a new one. My predecessor underestimated the starting population by a factor of at least three, the new intelligence officer said. Not his fault, the old sensor systems couldn't pick up the smaller domestic grey power sources. Is that correction enough to account for the current population? No, the lack of industrial sized power sources in the coastal no suggests it's largely homesteaders there. The number of those nodes has doubled since the sensor upgrade 10 years ago. The intelligence officer sighed. Somehow they're growing enough food to not merely sustain but also increase their population. And I can't see how they're doing it. Passive water filtration for that many people should require facilities large enough to show up on visual scans. Enough power filtration for agricultural use would have been detectable on the old sensors. Two legitimate ships in 30 years, and neither of them bothered to run our blockade, the warlock mused. The ones we caught were all pirates thinking to loot the place. I don't think starving them out is going to work. I've heard some humans are paranoid enough to stop our hundred year food supplies, the intelligence officer said. You'd think they'd be more careful with their birth rates if they were living off of those stockpiles though. Hmm. Find me someone to talk to down there, the warlord said. The human female on the display was stockier than the warlord had thought was normal for humans. His aesthetic sensibilities were grateful that she was a darker skinned specimen. The lightest humans were irritating for the way their skin refused to map to any named colour. We give up, the warlord told her. We'll leave or open trade relations as you choose, but for the love of whatever you name holy, please tell us how you're doing it. 
Give what up and doing what? The human asked. How are you growing enough food on a planet like this to increase your population without imports? The warlord explained. Wait, you mean the lack of shipping lately wasn't just Tavis being an idiot about prices again? It must have been a rhetorical question, because the human then started laughing so hard she wobbled in and out of her camera's range. Oh, good lord! Under siege and didn't even notice! Eventually the human's mirth subsided enough for the conversation to resume. So, you're figuring to just give up and go away, and all you're asking for is a little tech info? Correct, the warlord said. Unless you're interested in trading. I've heard too many horror stories about how humans fight to be interested in a ground war. Good, the human said. Because if you try to come down here and steal our stuff, we'll definitely make you bleed for it. Did you kill anybody while you were sitting around up there? Backed a few pirates, the warlord answered. The only two potentially legitimate ships we saw turned around and left without bothering to open communications. I can send you the sensor interrogation records if you don't want to take my word for it. The human nodded. Okay, send them to this comm code and frequency. I'll get back to you after Ajax has had a chance to review the data. 28 hours later, the human called back. Looks like you guys are alright. We ain't ceding our claim on this place to anybody, but if you want to buy our product at a fair price, we're willing to sell. We'll even throw into the secret to fine dining in this kind of place for free. Just, if Tavis gets stupid about prices, give somebody of the rest of us a call before you take your business elsewhere, okay? This time, the human was wearing a one-piece outfit that covered only her torso. Let me grab the waterproof head cam and I'll show you. The image disappeared, but the sound continued as the human explained. As lethal as the water would be to drink, we can still swim in it just fine, as long as we're careful about rinsing off afterward. Ah, here we go. The image reappeared, this time bouncing around a bit with the human's movements. It showed a steel door in a cast stone wall. Here's the water lock, the human said. She opened the door to reveal a natural and cast stone chamber with a rectangular pool of water. I can hold my breath long enough to reach a few of the nearest greenhouses, but it's good safety practice to grab an air bottle and mask anyway. The human did as she'd recommended and then dove into the water. She swam through an arched passage that was just too short to call a tunnel. After a period of time in the open water that had the Admiral's lungs aching in sympathy, she surfaced in one of the greenhouses. Sensors say she's still nearly three metres underwater, the intelligence officer said in surprise. He's not wrong, the human told the warlord. She panned her head cam around and said, As you can see, this is an inverted fishbowl shape. Weighted rim to keep it at the right depth, the tethers are just to keep it from drifting around and bumping into things. The inward curving rim provides a space to set the catch base and some growth trays. The human continued. This thing is close enough to the surface to get some solar warming. That result is increased evaporation in here. Then the water condenses on the surface and runs down the sides to where we have the plants growing. She leaned in to give the warlord a closer look. This particular plant has been engineered to be minimum maintenance and maximum nutrition, but the technique works for any hydroponic or container tolerant crop. What are these made out of? The warlord asked. Anything transparent can be made into an appropriate shape doesn't have to be round. Commercial facilities are often long and skinny with a triangular roof. It helps if you can mould the planters directly into the sides so the rundown water can't leak past, but it's not required. We tend to fab them out of whatever we can synthesise a transparent aleotrope from any of the surplus elements in the refining waste. Toughest materials get used to grow the food stuff in, the weak or brittle ones get used with the cheap stuff. This particular plant is so prolific that it's only legal on uninhabitable planets, so we'll throw it into domes that are barely worth the bother of sinking. So simple, the warlord said. Why are these submerged greenhouses not everywhere? Dunno, the human said. It's partly because by the time anyone can manufacture transparent materials of the required size and toughness, they've usually been doing industrial scale agriculture for a while and don't need to get all that creative. It also only works well in warm shallow water and on habitable planets, the tropics are prime real estate for existing ecosystems. Mm, yes, I can see why that would limit the use, the Admiral said. Tell you what, I'll leave a couple of ships here to discourage pirates and send somebody down to discuss prices and mediums of exchange. Sound good? Two months later. How in the great green grease spot are the humans living there? The warlord demanded as he stared at the swirling clouds of the gas giant, Sa'ol Six.